For women who've just lost their breasts to cancer, silicone implants can create even more fear. What are the alternatives? We'll show you an interesting solution this morning. This woman has an even greater dilemma. She discovered her lump, had it removed, but the lump tissue was lost. Now she has to decide what to do. Meet her this morning. It is a heavy weather day as we come to you live from City Line Avenue on this Friday morning. I'm Elizabeth Starr. As we start the broadcast, we want you to know that the National Weather Service has issued severe thunderstorm warnings for western Burlington County, and they are in effect until 1045 this morning. Of course, stay tuned to Channel 6 because AccuWeather and Dave Frankel will have the latest for you as this storm passes through our area. Again, severe thunderstorm warnings till 1045 in western Burlington County. I'll see you later on in the broadcast with the discussion of an alternative, a true alternative to breast reconstruction using silicone inside your body. But first, here's Wally. Good morning, Wally. Morning, Liz. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. I guess you could say that uh, it's kind of rainy weather in Judy Page's life because of something that happened to her that she didn't want to happen to her at all. It started last February 19th when, who, Judy, who had felt the lump first? Did you feel it? I felt it first. Okay, and that in your family that kind of raises a, an alarm bell or two because how many people have had cancer? I, there's several on my mother's side and my father's side. Um, my father just passed from cancer last year, and I have an uncle that passed this year from cancer, and and an aunt this year, and my, I have two aunts now that had breast cancer. So, where'd you go first, family doctor? Yes. And what did you say? Or she? He recommended me to, to see a, a surgeon. And then you went to see the surgeon where? At Thomas Jefferson Hospital. Surgeon said what? He felt a, a lump and he said that it had to be removed. So at this particular point, what's going through your mind? Um, where I, I have fear. I don't know whether I have cancer or not. And they lost the lump, so I never find out what happened. So they took you to the operating room to do, what's the procedure called? It's uh, a biopsy. Biopsy, mm -hmm. okay. So they're biopsying this lump. They're, they're removing the lump to see if it's malignant or whether it's benign. Yes. Were you awake for the procedure? Yes, I had a local. Okay. And did they say anything to you while the procedure was going on since you were awake? Um, they were trying to relax me a little bit. And then they were talking to each other about what they were going to do that evening or whatever. How long did it take? Um, I'm not sure, about 20, about 20 minutes to a half an hour. When did they tell you you would find out the results of the biopsy? They told me in a few days. So a few days goes by and you call what, your family doctor or? No, I called the breast surgeon's office and they told me they didn't have the results back yet. They kept uh, giving me a runaround. I called like three or four days and I kept getting the same answer until I finally went back to get the incision checked and they told me they had a problem with the pathology report. And they said one that would never be resolved. That's all they told you? Yes. So how did you find out that they lost the tissue? I got a call from the surgical center a couple weeks later. Um, she said she was calling to see how I was doing and that they normally check on patients that do uh, go through the surgical center a couple weeks later. And I asked her about my pathology report. She said that it was never made to the pathology lab, lab. The lump never made it. So they lost the lump somewhere between the surgical suite and the pathology lab? Yes. Now when you got off the phone from that phone call, what did you do? Well, um, I panicked because I didn't know what to do. And it, actually, I still don't know what to do. Um, I called my primary physician and he asked me did I want to see um, you know, get a second opinion, and maybe they could do something. And so I went to another surgeon at uh, Jefferson Hospital, and he said there's really nothing they could do. Without the lump. Right, because the whole tissue was gone. What are your choices? Actually, I don't. I really don't have any choices that I know of. I mean, well, I could. I mean, I could take radiation, but that's a lot to go through without knowing whether I have it or I don't have it, or I can have a breast removed, and that's major. And you 
might not have, have to have that happen at all. Right. What do you think you're going to do? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. A couple of things. First of all, let's acknowledge that Jefferson acknowledges that they lost the lump. There's no debate about that. They have given us a statement. We'll give it to you in a couple of minutes. But there's no debate about the fact that the lump is lost. Second of all, let's meet Steve Scheller. He's a male practice attorney. And he comes to what? Court to say what? Well, the main claim here relates to what Jefferson did uh, in terms of what Mrs. Page now has to go through. I mean, she's in this terrible position of playing Russian roulette with her life. I mean, she has this history of breast cancer in her family. There was a, a lump or a bullet in her, and she doesn't know whether it's cancerous or not, and she will never know in, unless uh, she develops cancer, and, uh, uh, and that would be terrible. And that's what she must face now. There are many people in the medical profession, though, who say that it's attorneys such as yourself who are driving up the cost of health care in America it's lawsuits like this that are making it more difficult to practice medicine and that somehow some way the law has to acknowledge that medicine is performed by human beings human beings make mistakes somebody messed up does that automatically mean that it's got to be a million dollar settlement no it doesn't have to be a million dollar settlement I think this is one of the major problems that we have hospitals don't police themselves it's, you can't expect doctors and hospitals to really supervise their own mistakes uh, as they should because they can't. It's very difficult for one surgeon to say another surgeon made a mistake. It's very difficult to point blame internally. We see too much effort at making money and making a profit in these hospitals recently uh, as a profit center. And unfortunately, uh, attorneys such as myself are placed in the position of being their policeman. I mean, I think that if the American trial lawyer wasn't there, uh, I don't think there would be very much done to correct this problem. I mean, we I not, know we're not here to get into a debate on this issue, but uh, I think the way to handle these things would be for the hospital to have said, called up immediately and said to Mrs. Page, a terrible thing has happened. We've lost your biopsy material. We don't understand why. We are going to take steps to correct this, and I, here's what we're going to do. And apologize. They didn't apologize until I read that statement that they gave you today. Mm -hmm. In fact, they didn't want to give us the records. We had to go to court to force the records out of them. Uh, I think I've seen other problems like this with many hospitals, and uh, I would welcome the opportunity to have a uh, a way of resolving these claims without going through a formal trial proceeding. They just don't want to do that. Well, we got a doctor here, and we're glad she's here. She's Pamela Scott, MD. She practices at Chester County Hospital. She told me just before we went on the air that you would do a breast biopsy eight, ten times a week. That's correct. Okay. In your years as a surgeon, as a general surgeon, have you ever lost one? I have not, no. In the overall scheme of things and the conduct of a hospital, how horrible of a sin is this? It's a tragedy um, that should not happen, but it's a, the a hospital is a team effort and we're all human and sometimes that uh, bridge from human to human is broken and it uh, sounds like this is what happened uh, in Judy's case. Can I ask you just a, uh, you're not Judy's physician, let's okay. let the record show you're not on staff at Jefferson, you're not Judy's physician, you're an interested bystander and we're glad you're here, but at this particular point in Judy's case. Is that medically accurate that if you, if you have no lump to biopsy that basically it, anything that you do is just a shot in the dark? That's correct. I think uh, that some credence could be given to the clinical characteristics of the lump. Uh, the impression that the surgeon had when she examined Judy. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain characteristics of uh, cancerous lumps as opposed to benign lumps. We're not always 100% correct in our clinical assessment, uh, but certainly um, there must have been some idea about whether it was malignant or not um, at the time, and that might um, go in to help Judy in her, her decision making. I gotta take a break. Was there any comment about that? Did the surgeon say anything upon removal of the lump, or is there anything in the surgeon's notes to say, looks benign, looks malignant? He said he didn't think, he's not, he didn't think that it was 
definitely admit. It's not 100% sure. Right. Okay, here we go. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll start taking your phone calls. Here is one woman's story about something that obviously has turned her life upside down. Don't go away. Welcome back to AM Philadelphia. First, the weather, which is of primary concern this morning. The National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm and flash flood warning for eastern Camden County. That warning is in effect till 11 o'clock. The storm has caused rainfall of two inches or more per hour and could trigger flash flooding of small streams. Of course, AccuWeather will give you the full details of what has turned out to be a pretty violent storm making its way through the Delaware Valley this morning. The AccuWeather forecast, of course, part of the uh, 12 o'clock action newscast. Now. A statement from Thomas Jefferson Hospital. Judy Page was admitted to Jefferson for a lumpectomy in February of 1992. Following the procedure, the hospital lost the specimen and therefore no diagnosis could be made. As an institution that provides care to many women with suspected or confirmed breast cancer, we realize how difficult this must be for Ms. Page and her family. We deeply regret that this error has occurred and remain available to Ms. Page to support her needs for continued care. Had that thought ever been expressed to you, Counselor? No. In fact, uh, this is the first time I've heard that apology. I mean, we went through hoops trying to get the records in the beginning. We had to subpoena them. And it just seems to me that this type of statement should have been made in the beginning. They should have promised in, uh, that they were going to try and correct the problem, told us exactly what happened, and given the profuse apology that they're now doing because it's good public relations. Uh, this is part of the problem in medical malpractice cases. An apology, some sensitivity to the injured person, this is very important. And this is not forthcoming unless we're on TV. Okay. And let's let also let the record show that according to their records, the, the lump left the operating room as per procedure. And somewhere between the operating room and the pathology lab is where it was lost, correct? It appears to be that's what happened. And I'm not sure of Jefferson's specific procedure, but I have a, an opinion that there's probably a lot of people involved in the process of transferring the material to the lab. And I think that will prove to be one of the problems. Also a problem is people in hospitals are like anybody else. They need to be trained. You know, there was a movie picture called Doctor that some of uh, your audience may have seen. They become unfortunately insensitive sometimes to the knowledge that these are life and death decisions they're involved with. No. Really, it's important to pay attention and to, to know that even the simple thing of transferring a piece of, transferring a piece of tissue mm -hmm. to a pathology lab is critical to somebody. Okay, I gotta take a call. Thanks for holding you on the air. Yes, good morning. Good morning. To the lawyer, my girlfriend went to Jefferson and they did cut in her, in her breath. They did not take the lump out. Do she have a lawsuit? And to Judith, I'm sorry this happened to you. I have a lump. It's been there for 16 years, and I am scared to let them go in and, and biopsy. They already, I've, I've been like, I already had them. They had pictures and whatnot. They said it's been nine. And I'm not going to let them do anything to my right breast until it aches like a toothache. When it starts aching... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ma'am, hold the phone for a second. Excuse please, please, if we can do anything today, please. If you wait till a lump aches like a toothache, you're playing Russian roulette, aren't you? A little bit, yes. Pain is not necessarily associated with malignancy, though. Mm, the, but the, on the other hand, though, the malignancy can be spreading like wildfire, relatively painless, correct? Yes. So your, your advice to this woman would be to get it checked? If she's had a lump for 16 years that has not changed in size, uh, it would be her choice whether to remove it or not. A lump that doesn't change for 16 years uh, would not be a cancer. Boy, boy, I wish we had more time for this. Judy, if you had to guess at this particular point, what do you think you're going to do? Um, <clears throat> I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I need somebody to... Um, I've asked for several um, suggestions and nobody really could give me any. I don't know, I'm still going to counseling. I'm not sure. Well, we really, it's, honestly, and I, and I know everybody who's watching feels the same way, we really wish you the best and hope you make the right choice. Thanks for coming on. Judy Page, her attorney, Steve Scheller, and uh, from the Chester County Hospital, uh, Dr. Pamela Scott, who's a physician and a surgeon, 
and we thank all three of them for being with us this morning. Liz?